I'm gonna show you my YouTube gear setup. I'm talking everything that I use to make my YouTube videos and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick from TuberTools.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. All right, so since my last YouTube setup video, a lot's changed. I've updated my main studio camera, the one that you're watching this video on right now. I've also picked up a out and about camera so I can get cool shots like this for a secret project that I'm working on that I'll link up down in the description below. I've added new lights, some live streaming gear, all types of awesome stuff, and I'm gonna show you everything. And since this is gear related, if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I'm talking about, make sure that you leave them down in the comments below and I'll answer them as long as I know the answer. Also, I'm gonna let you know the positives and negatives of everything that I use so that if you're trying to upgrade your gear or if you're trying to figure out what it is that you should get, so that you can make the right decision. Cameras. My main studio camera, this one right here, is a Canon 80D. I upgraded to this from a Canon 70D. The positives, I absolutely love the color and the overall look that I get from a Canon camera. I'm also very familiar with Canon products because I started out with the 70D and they've always been reliable for me. Negatives. There's no 4K, which kind of sucks. I'm actually really looking forward to when the next model comes out that is 4K. When I picked up my out and about camera, which we'll be talking about here in a second, it made me realize just how big and bulky and heavy this camera is. But as you can see, it still produces a great result for what I need it to do. So in my book, that's still a win. Thumbs up for the Canon 80D. Camera number two, my out and about camera is a Sony a6500 and I absolutely love it. Positives, it's lightweight, great autofocus. It shoots 4K, it's small. It has quick memory presets so you can switch from normal video settings to slow-mo settings in an instant. Negatives, it can get hot. I haven't experienced this personally yet, but word on the street is if you run it for a long period of time that it can overheat and shut down, which would kind of suck if you're trying to produce something. The record button, based on how I like to use cameras, is in a really stupid place in my opinion and it's super, super small. And of course, the biggest drawback from this camera that you're gonna see people complaining about all over the internet, just like the other new Sony cameras that are out, is it doesn't have a flip around screen, it just does this. So there's no, you can't do selfies with it. But I fixed that problem with getting a monitor, which we'll go into here in just a little bit. Lenses, for the Canon, this one right here, the lens that I have on this camera right now, this is a Canon 18 to 135 kit lens. If I'm shooting B-roll footage with this camera, I will then switch the lens to the 50 millimeter just to give it a different look. But overall, this lens right here, the 18 to 135 stays on it eh, about 98% of the time. With that said, you are more than welcome to fact check me on the percentage of time that this lens stays on this camera. When it comes to lenses for the Sony a6500, I got this 16 to 50 millimeter lens that came with the camera as part of the kit. Um, I actually love this lens. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And I also picked up a Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. This thing is absolutely incredible. My friend Brian G. Johnson, I'll put a link to his channel up here. He actually suggested that lens to me. And thanks, Brian. I absolutely love that lens. Microphones. What you're hearing right now is the Audio-Technica AT875R shotgun microphone. And it's so close to me, I can almost taste it. If I reach up and I pull it down, it's literally this close to me right now. Positives, it has a great low end, a great just overall even sound. I've had this microphone since the beginning from my very first YouTube video. I'll actually link to that right up here if you wanna see it. But from my very first YouTube video, I've had this microphone. It's a workhorse, I absolutely love it. Negatives, the only thing that I do not like about this microphone is that it's an XLR microphone. So in order to actually plug it into the camera, I have to route it through a Zoom H4n audio interface, which I'll get to here in just a minute. But that basically adds to the stuff that I have to have, which kind of sucks. But 
it's worth it for the sound. And of course I could use other devices to route the microphone through, but the idea is that I have to use something else to route it through instead of just plugging it directly into the camera. Next up on the list is the Rode VideoMic Pro. The positives of the Rode VideoMic Pro, it's small, it plugs right into my camera with a mic input, it has a decibel reduction to help reduce that annoying hiss sound that happens with a lot of mics, and it sounds good. Negatives, it's battery powered, which means that you have to roll with batteries. So if you're throwing this thing in a bag and you're trying to be compact and you're running around, you still gotta keep some nine volt batteries with you wherever you go in case you need them. And that kind of sucks, but what sucks worse is that the process to change the battery on this thing, horrible design flaw in the battery compartment for the Rode VideoMic Pro. But it sounds great, real easy to throw on top of your camera if you're a vlogger. Um, you can put it on a boom stand if you're doing presentation style videos kind of like I do. But overall, it's a, it's a pretty good mic. Next up is the Rode Procaster. As you can tell, I'm a fan of Rode microphones, but with the Rode Procaster, that's what I use in my live streaming setup at home. That's what I use to make Skype calls. It's what I use to record tutorials. It's even what I use to talk to my mom with if I talk to her on Skype or another conferencing software. We also use three more Rode Procasters on our Nimmin live show that we do every Saturday. I'll put a link to the live streams up here if you wanna see what that audio sounds like. But overall, we're extremely happy with those microphones and uh, I highly recommend Rode, as you can tell, overall. And they didn't pay me or anything to say that. I'm just saying they make good stuff. Now for the lighting setup. The lights back here behind me are just can lights with just normal colored light bulbs put in them. Nothing fancy, just real easy. They're pretty cheap, nothing real complicated about them. The front lighting on the other hand has been upgraded to aperture LED panels. I just got them and they are absolutely incredible so far. The positives, you can dial in your brightness and the color of your light. That alone is worth it for these in my opinion. They're also compact and they have the option to plug into a wall or you can use the batteries so that you can record anywhere at any time. Negatives. The only negative that I can come up with, and I'm reaching here just so that I can give you a negative, is that the main light, it's pretty heavy. Sorry, it's all I got. Miscellaneous other items that help me get the job done are an x right grayscale color balance card. This thing is awesome for helping you dial in the white balance and helping you get your colors right in your video. To get cool drone shots for personal stuff, I use the DJI Mavic Pro. I love it, I wish that I would have bought it sooner. I use an Elgato Stream Deck for live streaming and I have to tell you that this thing is a game changer if you are a live streamer. The audio interface that I use to get my Rode Procaster into my computer is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. The interface I use to get my Audio Technica into my camera is a Zoom H4n audio recorder. A Live View Solo for out and about streaming. If you don't know about this little box yet, I'll actually put a link to this down in the description. If you don't know about this box yet, and you are into streaming in any capacity, you're gonna love this thing. Basically what it does is it takes two cell phone signals and then it bonds them together to create one powerful, strong signal that you can stream from anywhere as long as you have a cell signal. Audio Technica ATH M30X headphones at home and in the live studio for listening to myself and sometimes music when I'm streaming. Now that Sony A6500 problem that I was telling you about earlier with the flip screen, how it doesn't have one of those, I got this best view monitor that basically allows me to monitor whatever is being shown on the screen. So basically I take the HDMI out of that, plug it into this, and then that allows me to see what the camera is seeing. It's a workaround, it's a headache, but it gets the job done and that's what matters. I made another video I'll link to right up here um, that shows some behind the scenes of my studio setup, basically showing you where everything is placed and stuff like that and just showing you like, give me a full tour of my setup. So if you're interested in checking that out, the link will be right up here for that. And if you wanna learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.